Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Dave Torrey, and I am back out here treasure hunting, finally. There's been a lot of freezing and thawing and that kind of stuff going on lately, but I think that we're finally out of it. 50 degrees, windy, and I am back at one of my favorite spots, Indian Head Hill. And I think that all this freezing and thawing has actually changed the ground a little bit because there's all sorts of new stuff popping up all of a sudden. So, before I go any further, I want to thank you guys so much for 1,000 subscribers on this channel. The fact that you've come on this journey with me uh, to find and save history and stuff like that, that means so much to me. Speaking of that, I have some history to show you guys. Little 1920 signal on the Equinox, and bang. I believe another Indian Head Penny, the signet of Indian Head Hill. Very nice. Yeah, they come out of the ground really, really cruddy looking, but once you give them a wash and toothpick, then usually they come out awesome. So here we go. Let's go try to save some history and stuff. Right down there, it's like a 1415 signal. And I bet it's an old V-nickel, judging by what I have found in this area otherwise. Oh, it's a buff. We got a buffalo nickel. A buff is good enough. And it's amazing what a good freeze and thaw can do. I've poked around this area a million times before. And it's still churning stuff up. Bet you that's an Indian head. If it is, that would be Indian head number 61 for Indian Head Hill. I do believe that's what we got. Yeah, it's definitely an Indian. You can barely see the wreath, but it's on there. I'm not totally sure what I got here. It was like mid-twenties. Then I hit the plug. Sorry, flip the plug. Now it's at like high 20s, 30s. Sidewall. What's that all about? <laughs> I love when that happens. Huh. And there it is. Looks like an Indian. Hopefully not a weedy. Why would it be hitting 30s though? That's why you check that hole again. Ah, that is a weedy. Boo. Huh. And here's that hole. No other good targets in there. Weird. All right, I am back out, finally. Things have thawed out a little bit. And I'm actually doing a little test hunt in my own yard where I've found, like, late 1800s pendants and coins and stuff like that. And it looks like my pendant patch has come through again. So wheat. I've found like, I think like six little religious pendants out here before. It's pretty cool. Let's see if I can get this thing to focus for you. Nice. Probably a little Jesus pendant. Good signs. All right, I was just digging on a really shallow 19 to 20 sort of sound. I thought it was going to be a penny, and that pops out. No idea what to make of that. Looks like it's got some age to it. Doesn't really look like a button. Hmm. It's got those kind of double drill marks in the front of it. I'm going to have to clean that up. Give it a closer look. Could be interesting. Huh. Well, I was just digging on a pretty reliable, like, 21, 22. And I first see bottle cap come out. And then I see that. And from what I've heard, these are um, military training rounds. You find a lot of these in preserves around here because the, uh, the local, you know... Uh, militia and even like you know World War II soldiers would have training runs around here and they would use blanks like these during those 
kind of interesting. I don't know why it would be here, middle of a backyard. Maybe a World War One soldier or a World War Two soldier lived here. Yeah, this is the only coin that I found today. But at least it's not a memorial. We got us a weedy. Wee. Oh, here's a pretty good one. Not often do you find a drawer pull with an escutcheon plate on the back. That's kind of cool. Probably turn of the century. Maybe a little older. Nice. Hmm. That's new. Oh man, I haven't found one of these in a while. Flip the plug. Barely did anything. And I saw that sticking out. Cool. Old pocket knife. Looks like it's actually got real wooden scales too. Could be kind of old. Oh, I wonder if that's like an engraved name. I can't wait to clean that up. I've actually found these uh, in good enough condition to get them working again too, so. Sweet. I like that. Uh, here's a new one for this spot. Some spectacles. Sweet. These look kind of old. Really thin wireframe thing. I'll put that in the pouch. All right, I was working on a really shallow 18 to 20. It's like two inches down and that popped out. I'm thinking like belt end. It looks like it was riveted. It's closed most sides. It looks like the end of a belt. It would have been kind of riveted on there. That could be old. It's a bee. I'll take it. Well, I'm not quite sure what I have here, but the more I rub on it, the more I'm liking it. I see some really ornate kind of lettering right there. I'm thinking part of an old clasp, maybe, or a buckle. The only reason I'm saying clasp is I don't know why they would ornately monogram a buckle. But that's kind of cool. It was ringing up like 11, 12. Kind of looks like brass though. Interesting. In the bag. I'm right next to where I dug that clasp. Right in there. And I got a nice 16, 17. Which I didn't think to live dig because it is a little bit low. Usually for most pennies and stuff. But that looks like a nice greenie to me. Hopefully that's an Indian. Let me check it out. We do, in fact, have an Indian here. You can see a little one cent going on. Although, I don't know. I don't think I see a shield up there. I wonder if this is an eagle. Oh, that would be amazing. That would be my third flying eagle ever. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I see a shield up there. That's awesome. I'm going to have to take good care of that. Sure sounds pretty reliable. Mm, kind of bigger now. We'll find out. in the plug. Not too deep. There you are. Whatever you are, it's looking fancy. Ooh, slow reveal. That's coolness. 
what variety of coolness I am not sure I see kind of a clippy doodad on the back there interesting I decided to brush this thing off a little bit and it's looking really pretty I still don't know what it is I'm thinking a little brooch kind of thing it has what looks like it would have been a spring-loaded kind of clip that's busted off on the back and this really fancy etched face it's like painted with something and it's got this brass surround I don't know a brooch or a hair clip whatever it is I like it it's fancy nice there's another new one for this place hitting like a 14 15 sounded weird on the pinpoint it's definitely why painted oh, look at that how nice it's it's just a little thank you from J H Brustelin Brustelin you Burke Pontiac oh, cool so it's like a it's like a car dealership pen pen this is a funny little article now that looks to me like a big old hunk of trash but you flip it over you start seeing a little bit of fancy a little bit of interesting stuff going on there and then there's this little claw system with kind of a blackish looking maybe stone in it I was just about to huck this thing in the bag started seeing those details I wanted to show you before I clean it off I bet you it's gonna be some sort of a heart pendant or something like that it's got the look to it oh it was ringing up like a 12 13 on the Equinox so not the best quality metal I guess but let me clean it off we'll bring it back yeah this thing's pretty cool it kind of looks like iron but I don't know it's really ornate and it's like kind of that open work sort of style and it's almost like it was supposed to be like an empty cavity that they put this gem sort of stone into maybe just glass I don't know um, and then close these kind of clasps around it but if you look into it I don't know if you can see it through the camera but it's actually green so like I'm saying either green glass or maybe it's some kind of gem I don't know pretty cool though it is like a little I don't know heart pendant covered in filigree and stuff oh, I'm excited to clean that up I bet that'll be pretty cool looking nice jewelry now this was ringing up a perfect 1920 on the equinox <laughs> and it's like a, a really perfectly circular flattened out piece of lead it's drilled through the middle so I'm wondering if that could be like some sort of really primitive um, maybe a hem weight or maybe like a yeah I don't know maybe a maybe a fishing sinker but be weird that they spend so much time making it that circular and so small that's interesting so here I got this really weird patchy kind of 15 tone and it was because it was skating over this thing some sort of banding I don't know some kind of brass banding for something and then I rescan the whole and this thing pops out it looks like it's got some like leather on it or something maybe it was paper at one point no some sort of cloth or leather it's got that on it which is clearly kind of like a hinged latch system yeah that's on a hinge so that would have locked into that I guess I have no idea I gotta recheck this hole where there's a latch there's a vessel that somebody kept stuff in here's a really reliable 16 17 
Man, I apologize for this wind noise. It is quite blustery today. Do my best to block that for you. So, 16, 17 stuff is stuff that I'm usually not too excited about, but here, that's what all of the uh, purse clasps rang up as, as well as old Indian head pennies and uh, a trime that I found. Kind of a washed out trime rang up as a 17 too. And then that comes out. Oh man, could that be an old kettle point? That would be insane. It really looks like it would be something like a kettle point. I don't know. I don't want to get too excited about that, but see if there's something else in there that I'm missing. So I got back into that hole and there was another 17 sound in there and it just popped out. Actually popped out sitting just like this too. Looks like it's another one of whatever that was. Man, how amazing would that be if those are two kettle points sitting in the ground together? They're kind of thin for that though, aren't they? I don't know. Can't picture what else that would have been really. That's awesome, maybe. <laughs> whatever these are, here's number three. That's three of whatever these are, same spot. Hmm, maybe interesting. One looks even more arrowheady than the others. And this is certainly not what I'm looking for, but it's kind of interesting. I got like a 13 signal, like three inches down next to this nice old tree. And I started uh, pulling out what looked like a zipper that's attached to the rest of whatever article of clothing this was. You can see there old buttons on it. I guess those could even be mother of pearl or something. I have no idea how uh, old this would be. I can't even find that zipper. But, I don't know, maybe I'll pull a couple of buttons off of it and take those home. Gross! seems to be hitting a little bit higher than an Indian head would, but it's at the same depth that they all seem to be here. Gotta try it. We're out. Come on, Indian head. Whoa, whoa, what am I looking at? What the heck am I looking at? Is that a trime? Oh my God. Or maybe a three cent nickel. Oh my God, it looks like silver. I think it's gonna be a trime. Oh. Let my heart rate slow down a little bit. So I'll just relax. Everybody. Just stay calm. I'm ecstatic right now. I can't believe I just found another trine. I'm quite convinced. It's over. That's got to be a little trine. Oh my god. I did not expect that. I really thought that was just going to be like a... Oh, it could be a half dime too. What am I thinking? There's lots of things it could be. I was just... I was expecting an Indian head. Wow. I got to spray this off. Try to make sure you guys see this at the same time that I do. I still can't identify any of those details. Whoa, that came right through. Ah, oh, it's beautiful, whatever it is. I can't tell yet, but it's freaking beautiful. Wow. Is it foreign? Is it some sort of foreign coin? It might be. It might be some little foreign washed out silver coin what the heck is that okay so after a little bit of research and a little bit of cleaning 
I did find out that that you can see the date right in the middle of the coin there. It's an 1880 H. You can see the little H at the very bottom. 1880 H Canadian half dime. That's pretty cool. I've never found a Canadian silver before. Not even a modern-ish one. And so that's a Canadian 1880 uh, five cent piece. That's really cool. I'm very happy with that. Before this episode's over, I want to show you guys what it's really like metal detecting in the woods. Here's what they show you on camera. Now here's what they don't show you. Ah. Something like that. On with the show. <laughs> this is crazy. I think I just busted into a time capsule. Uh, now I gotta be careful about what's in there, but I feel stuff in there. <laughs> I hope there's nothing living in there. I'm gonna dig this thing out. Alright, so when I got this signal, it was like jumpy and all over the place and I kind of shot my shovel into it and felt like a thunk as the shovel goes through this plastic wall. And I look down in there, I think I see a pocket knife and stuff like that. So I'm assuming it's a time capsule or something, but what is that all about? <laughs> it's like an upside down lunchbox. Yeah, that was all taped shut. Uh, I don't want to like disturb somebody's thing, but I already kind of broke into the bottom of it, so I don't know. <laughs> this is kind of exciting, though. Jeez. Ugh. Okay. This is gross. This is all gross. We got some hot hands. We got some fireball. Gotta have some fireball. It looks like they had the fireball. Got a spoon. I don't even know. Ah. Got that. I bet that's who these people are. It was these guys. <laughs> yep. This stuff looks like these guys, too. Where's that pocket knife I saw? Glow sticks. Gotta have the glow sticks. Oh, there we go. Yep, that's ruined. A little uh, bracelet thing there. Yeah, this is all gross stuff. This is all gross stuff, and there's like little knife blades in there from the pocket knife. Well, hmm. What do I even do with this? 
I mean, I'd like to think that maybe I should rebury it so that these people can, like, find their time capsule. But, uh, pretty gross stuff. I think I'm going to have to take this thing out of here. <sighs> Environmentally responsible. This is the cost. And we are back at home for a wrap up on a couple of very productive half days of metal detecting. Uh, that freeze and thaw must have done quite a bit to change the anatomy of the ground, stirred up all sorts of great new finds in an old spot. Uh, starting in the back, we've got this interesting hinged lock assembly that I'm thinking could have been for a piece of luggage, maybe a briefcase or a suitcase, because it had this sort of cloth or leather sort of binding around the receiver here at the lock. I'm not sure, but it's cool. Got a old drawer pull with a scutcheon plate, probably early 1900s, turn of the century, still in working condition. Got this really cool old scout knife that I believe I saw is Valley Forge brand, probably early 1900s to mid, and this is a uh, antler that they use for the scales. Pretty cool. This piece of lead, I'm still assuming, is some sort of a hem weight, or maybe even a fishing sinker, but it is kind of nicely rounded, nicely drilled, so they would have put a bit more work into this than something that they would have just tied to a line thrown in the water, as far as I can see. Got an old belt end, found with tons of 1800s, early 1900s stuff. Um, this thing that I found in the yard, I think this was an old cap, maybe a cap for some sort of um, automotive use or mechanical use, because it's got that sort of edged rim, and it's got what might have been threads sort of smashed down, and very crudely smashed down and kind of drilled out over here. Again, very crudely. So I'm thinking this could have been an old cap that was smashed out to be a kid's uh, spinner toy. They'd put strings through either side, and when you pulled the strings, it would kind of make this thing zing and spin and fun stuff. Um, didn't seem to be too deep. Uh, not terribly old. So that's kind of what I'm going with. <clears throat> this is one of those buttons from that gross sweatshirt looking thing that I found. It's plastic, so I'm assuming that that was not old at all, but there you go. Set of spectacles. They've got the uh, rubber, you know, nose guards on there, so probably not too old. Maybe, you know, after the 50s, maybe 1970s or something. I really don't know. And moving on to the better stuff here, this one in the back looks to me to be, I don't know, part of a garter clip or some, si some sort of a clip, maybe something that you would have seen on a purse, uh, the bottom uh, end of a clip, you know, that would have held the purse closed, some kind of a clasp. And uh, it's got this lettering on it, which is, I don't know, W-G-O-Y, something like that. I can't really get um, all the details out of it, but something that was visible and, um, you know, aesthetic enough where they decided to monogram it with the, the name of the company or the person. So, cool piece. Got the obligatory pile of clad. Uh, this thing right here is still sort of unidentified to me. Um, it was definitely a piece of jewelry. I don't know if it was part of a brooch or part of a, a necklace, maybe a pendant, but that uh, bead in there is, let me see if I can get this right, there we go, is green, some sort of green glass maybe. I can't imagine that they would put an emerald in something like that, but probably old plated brass pendant with a uh, green glass gem inside of it. <clears throat> Interesting. Maybe a hat pin. Who knows? But tons of detail and filigree on it. Really cool. Uh, moving up, got this other sort of 
what looks to me to be like a little brooch or maybe kind of a collar pin or something. It's got this elongated sort of back on it that would have gone through something and then had a, probably a spring loaded, um, you know, kind of clasp on the back. This appears to be bent up, so it would have been straight at one point, but the front is quite pretty. It looks to me to be possibly even like a very thin sort of sheet or veneer of gold that has been enamel painted. A lot of detail in there, and it seems like there's none of this nice gold flaking away, so I feel like if I pulled that binding off of there, I might find that it is a really thin sheet of gold. Pretty cool. A little religious pendant from the yard. Yep. Uh, just a little, looks like Catholic maybe, Jesus pendant. No writing or details on there really. I believe this is a 1916 Buffalo nickel. Uh, Indian heads. Got a 81. This one that I thought was a flying eagle turned out to be an early, early Indian, but it's still got some of that original patina on it, which is really amazing because it is a 59 first year Indian head penny. Still too um, old to have the wreath. Pretty nice coin, actually. Uh, another pretty much totally wiped out Indian. I did turn it just right so I could kind of see, I believe it is an 83, 1883 Indian head, but pretty destroyed. Um, and before I move on to the final coin, I want to bring to attention these things right here, which I am now quite convinced are uh, kettle points or possibly like a kid's um, you know, like a child's reproduction of kettle points because they are quite thin, but at the time they would have been much thicker and much more useful. And you can see that they are kind of crudely hewn from a piece of metal. And I can't see what other purpose they would have. They were all like four to six inches down, all in the exact same spot on top of this large rock formation. And um, I have a few examples of kettle points online that I'm gonna throw up on screen. And a lot of them have this hole in the middle there that would have been for wrapping cord through to keep the point on the tip of the arrow. Um, but some of them also don't, especially the older ones, apparently 16, 1700s ones, of which there was definitely 16, 1700s activity in that area and kind of a bustling seaport um, down the river. You can see those cut points where somebody, like I say, crudely kind of cut these out, especially on the bottoms. I don't see what these would be used for otherwise. They're all similarly thin, probably out of the same piece of metal, and they're all slightly different from each other. So that, that says to me that these really could be authentic um, Native American kettle points. You know, and all of them, four of them being in the exact same area, and like, you know, literally within a few inches of each other, it's almost like somebody dropped a full quiver full of arrows that completely deteriorated except for the points and just left these babies in the ground. And uh, I found three of them on camera. The last one came up, but I didn't feel the need to turn the camera on after finding three of those on there. So if those are authentic Native American kettle points, that would be a real find, you know, four of these in one spot. Like I say, maybe an entire quiver, like somebody was out there hunting and shot one, um, one arrow, and, you know, at, at some sort of, you know, wildlife and, uh, and dropped their quiver and ran off, got their kill and never came back for them. Or maybe something much more uh, involved. But... Uh, I'll do some more research. If you guys have any idea of uh, whether or not they are authentic or how to find out, that would be amazing. Um, and moving on to the last item on the list, got this 
1880 Canadian silver five cent piece which is a really cool find for me because I never find silver Canadian and uh, much less something from the 19th century and it's got a mint mark which is very cool and so confusingly enough that H mint mark down at the very bottom there is for Birmingham mint which is a privately owned mint in Britain and so I guess Birmingham mint minted tons of coins for foreign countries and for much of the British uh, Empire at the time uh, they minted them for France and Italy and China and Canada and shipped them over so this is pretty cool this is a 1880 silver five cent piece from England minted for Canada brought to the United States I really like that tiny little piece of silver but that's awesome very different from what I'm used to so thank you guys very much for watching if you like what you saw like and subscribe go out and dig cool stuff up